low back pain, simple or complicated. In this video and the next few videos, I'm going to try to explain low back pain, which can be simple or complicated. It is hard to imagine anything simple associated with a disease or sickness, but low back pain can be simple. I'm going to try to explain the difference between a simple low back pain situation and a complicated situation. So 80% of the population will experience low back pain during the lifetime and about 3% will experience lower extremity radiculopathy. Radiculopathy could mean shooting pain down to the buttock, the posterior thigh, and the posterior leg. It's important to ask a low back pain patient few questions. Do you have bladder and bowel symptoms? If the answer is no, that's good. If the answer is yes, then this could be bad because it means the patient could have Coda Equinus syndrome. Then you need to get an emergency MRI and you need to make sure there is no compression of the Coda Equina. If there is, that's an emergency. You need to do an urgent surgery, otherwise the bladder may not recover. The second question do you stagger when you walk? Do you have unsteady gait? And if the answer is no, that's good. If the answer is yes, I have unsteady gait, and I also have clumsiness in the hand, then you should start looking at the cervical spine of the patient for another associated lesion that may cause cervical myelopathy. The third question you're going to ask the patient, does the pain radiate down to your leg? If the answer is yes, then this is radiculopathy. This is nerve irritation associated with lumbar disc herniation. This radicular pain is usually unilateral, leg pain, and dermatomal. If the patient has a low back pain, 50% of the patients resolve their pain in one week, and 95% of the patients resolve their pain in three months. But if you have radiculopathy, 50% recover in one month, and 75% recover in one year. So if you have nerve irritation and radiculopathy, is really more complex than if you have lower back pain by itself. This radiculopathy may take longer time to get better. Ask the patient about neurogenic claudication, which is pain in the buttock and leg. Worse with prolonged standing. If the answer is yes, then that patient probably has spinal stenosis. So when the patient stands for a long time, the hyperextension of the spine makes the pain worse and flexion of the spine improves the pain. Another question you ask the patient, if the patient has pain from movement of the spine, and if the answer is yes, then this is a mechanical pain. This is probably better than pain that happens at rest and at night, especially if the patient have weight loss or fever, which can be associated with a tumor or infection. 15% of the new patient visits to physicians are due to low back pain. So it's a very common thing. Back pain can be idiopathic or non-specific. In 85% of cases, you will find no cause. Reaching a definitive conclusive diagnosis may be difficult in 85% of patients because they may have that idiopathic low back pain that doesn't have a cause, that will go away, that the majority will get better in three months. This is a good thing. This is one of the questions you ask the patient. Is there more leg pain than back pain? 
So if the patient have leg pain greater than the back pain, patient will have sciatica. In sciatica or lumbar radiculopathy, leg pain is greater than the back pain, especially if the disc is large or extruded. If the patient has more back pain than leg pain, then you can successfully treat the patient conservatively. Sciatica can be self-diagnosed by the patient. And sciatica means nerve root irritation, probably by a herniated disc. That disc sometimes is resolved with time. And the pain will be worse with sitting, coughing, sneezing and forward flexion. The pain is less by lying down and rest. So if the patient has a painful lumbar flexion, then you have a disc problem. If the patient has a painful lumbar extension, then the patient has a facet problem. So when you do the examination for the patient with sciatica, you do the straight leg raise test, and if it is positive, it may indicate the patient has disc herniation, compressing a nerve root. Disc herniation and leg pain is more complicated than low back pain alone. Another good thing that you know from the history, you will figure out about the risk factors. Usually, the patient is 30 to 50 years old, male, with history of heavy lifting and twisting, not happy with the job. Patient can be depressed. Patient may be exposed to excessive vibration. The history of smoking. Patient may be overweight with a sedentary lifestyle. So, the cause may be occupational with repetitive heavy lifting and driving. So you can correct this. Be aware of things that increase the disc pressure and cause more pain. It's actually, the disc pressure is the lowest in a supine position, followed by standing. And the worst disc pressure is when the patient is sitting and leaning forward. The x-ray may not be needed in the first six weeks unless there is a reason for it. There is reason usually red flags like infection, tumor, trauma. When you do radiological studies, don't start with an MRI, start with an X-ray first. The MRI will show the soft tissues and will show any neural compression. And when the disc is degenerative, the T2 will show a dark disc due to loss of water. But this finding does not predict the development of back pain because this finding in an MRI can happen in asymptomatic patients. When you look at the MRI, it has a lot of false positive. 35% have an abnormal disc in asymptomatic patients less than 40 years old and 90% of patients more than 60 years old will have an abnormal disc. So be careful about the MRI. Obviously, if the patient has a pacemaker, you will do a CT myelogram if necessary. In lumbar stenosis, MRI is really very good in showing the reason for the pain. Just be careful, pain in the back may be a referred pain from the SI joint, from the buttock, or from the hip. The referred pain is usually dull, ache, deep pain. The pain also may be non-organic. Patient may have overreaction and severe tenderness from light touch. Patient may have pain in a non-anatomic distribution. You also need to check if the patient have a history of depression, if they're taking antidepressant medication. Check if the patient has fibromyalgia and myofascial pain syndrome. So how about the treatment? What is proven? Patient education, bad school, smoking cessation, weight loss, cardiovascular fitness program, and decreased mechanical stress, physiotherapy activity modification, anti-inflammatory, 
oral steroids, and muscle relaxant. 90% of the patient will get better in one month. And you will do the surgery if there is failure of conservative treatment for at least six weeks or if there is progression of the neurological deficit. Surgery for disc herniation is better than no surgery, especially for relief of leg pain. There's faster recovery, better physical function, and overall satisfaction with greater pain and functional improvement. When do you have successful surgery? If you have neurological findings on exam, if the straight leg raise tension sign is present, or if the MRI or CT scan is positive for disc herniation. If you have all these three, the result of surgery is like 95% success rate. The patient will feel better in the recovery room. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.